Hello there, Reject Nation. I'm Greg Alba. I'm John. Friends is one of my all-time favorite shows. You know what? I'll take it back. It's my favorite show of all time. Mm -hmm. There, I've said it. One of our top reward tiers on Patreon, whatever video you request, we must definitely do and put up on the YouTubes. And today comes from Michael B, who has asked for a video for us to cover. And I'm very excited to check out. It comes from Screen Rant called Friends Pitch Meeting. I'm assuming it's one of their joke videos. No, this is the actual pitch meeting. They had a camera there all the way back then. <laughs> Comedy! Are you stopping? Jokes! I thought you were gonna keep going. Making some joke. No, that's I, just the I, one. I, I thought you were gonna, like, It's a really... succinct joke. Oh. I paid attention. Every single note that you give me on camera <laughs> in joke form, I take very seriously and apply to my life. Okay, oh. All jokes now will be five to ten words long, and that's it. <laughs> Hey, you stop. <laughs> so you have a sitcom idea for me? Yeah, so it's called Friends. And what's it about? Well, it's about a group of people that are friends. Right, but like, what's their deal? Well, they're all friends, together. Who are the characters, though? The friends. Yeah, but why them? Well, the title of the show is Friends, so obviously we're gonna follow the friends. <laughs> why, would, why would we follow anyone else? Okay, talk to me <laughs> about the characters. What kind of stuff are they gonna be doing? <laughs> the friends? Yeah. Just friend stuff. Ah. I'm sorry, am I doing something wrong? I, I, I don't. It's fine. So there's a group of friends. Yes. How old are they? The friends? The friends, yes. How old are the friends? They're like in their mid 20s. Okay, good. That's helpful. Great. So they do like typical mid 20s stuff? Exactly. They're just like every group of friends in their mid 20s. Awesome. Relatable. Yeah, like one of them's a paleontologist named Ross. What? His name is Ross. <laughs> He's a paleontologist? You know, you know how when people are in their 20s, there's always one in the group who's like, a paleontologist with a PhD. <laughs> does, does that happen to people? Yeah, I think that's pretty commonplace. Okay, well, at least he'll be an interesting character. He's the boring one. Oh. Yeah, and he's gonna have this big love thing with Rachel over the span of several seasons. Rachel. Yeah, when we meet her, she's literally just run away from her own wedding because she realized she's not attracted to her fiance. She thinks he looks like Mr. Potato Head. Oh my God, that's horrible. Yeah, she's not the best person. Isn't it gonna be tough to get people to wanna follow a character like that? Actually, super easy, barely an inconvenience. How so? Well, I figure she could like, Never wear a bra. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess that'll be good for ratings. Yeah, should be. So anyway, Rachel's gonna move into Monica's apartment without asking permission. Who's Monica? Monica is Ross's sister. So Rachel must be like really good friends with Monica for that to happen. They haven't spoken in years and Monica wasn't invited to Rachel's wedding. And she's just gonna suddenly move in with her unannounced and become super tight with all the friends. Yep. Instantly. Okay, so tell me about Monica. Okay, so Monica used to be fat, so... The jokes kind of write themselves. What do you mean? <laughs> I say we have a flashback where Monica is dancing. It's going to be funny because she's fat. Isn't that going to kind of alienate a large group of overweight people? Well, look at it this way. Isn't any group of overweight people a large group of overweight people? I guess, but does that make it okay? Maybe not, but these jokes are going to be really good. A fat person dancing is pretty funny. Yeah, we're also going to have to really like food because she's fat. Because she's fat, exactly. Uh, all right, I'm sold. Yeah, so anyway, now Monica is kind of a neat freak, and we're going to have her fall in love with Chandler eventually. Chandler is one of the friends. Right. It sounds like a lot of these friends are actually lovers, so... Well, maybe we should call the show Lovers. They're friends. Okay. So anyway, Chandler's like the wise, cracking, sarcastic guy in the group. So he's always making the other friends laugh. They will never laugh at his jokes. Never. never. So he's like cracking the jokes so for himself, I guess. I guess. Isn't that a little crazy? It is when you stop to think about it. So are there any other love friends? Are there any other friends? Well, there's also Joey, who's Chandler's roommate. And what's his deal? Well, he's dumb and he likes food, but he's not fat. Oh, that's it? No, he also really likes sleeping with women. Like, if he could sleep with over 50 women during the course of the show, that, that'd that be perfect. That feels like a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. But because he's dumb, people will be like, oh, that's Joey. Any other friends that you know about? Ooh, yeah. Well, next up, there's Phoebe. What's up with her? Well, very early on, we're gonna find out that her mother committed suicide when she was 14. Oh my god. Yeah, and her mom was a drug dealer too. Jesus. So then Phoebe was taken care of by this albino guy and then he killed himself. Wow, I mean, I guess it'll kind of balance out the show to have such a dramatic character. No, she's the silly one. She's, she's all weird and stuff. Probably because her parental figures killed themselves. Yeah, probably. Weirdo. So what kind of funny stuff do all these friends do together? 
Most of the time they hang out in a coffee shop, they very rarely go to work, and other than that, they just hang out in their giant, beautiful apartments. They're in their mid-twenties, but they have giant, beautiful apartments. That's right. So this takes place in like a small town or New York City. <laughs> wow, so they must all have like really high-powered jobs. Well, Joey is a struggling actor, Rachel works in a coffee shop, Monica works in a restaurant, Chandler has a job, and he plays the guitar. Interesting. And I'm guessing since it's in New York, there's going to be a lot of diversity. Everyone will be white. <laughs> Everyone. Wow. And that's basically the show. That's all she wrote. That's all I wrote. What happened? Uh, it's these damn clapper lights they installed. Oh, that's fun. Oh, let's not play with it. Wait. Do that again? Huh. What? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. So, what about casting? <laughs> Will you get to cast some, like, big stars to help promote the show? Actually, I'm thinking of going, like, low-level, no-name actors. Oh, how come? Well, to be completely honest, a show like this will last one, maybe two seasons, so this way we know we're never gonna have to pay a lot of money for actors. Fair enough. That's smart. <laughs> Hey guys, Ryan here. Thanks for watching that video. Let me know in the comment Thank section you, what other Ryan. movies and TV shows you'd like to see pitches for. There are also a bunch of other ones on the channel. Walking so be sure Dead. To check those out and subscribe. And you can check out ScreenRant.com for all the latest movie and TV news. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. My brother actually just texted me a video of, from this guy. Uh, yeah, he wanted me to watch him. He's a funny ass mother. He's a funny mother guy. Mother F word, man. Oh, such great points about my favorite show. <laughs> I was gonna say in the in so the... it's in New York, so they'll be ethnically diverse. They're all oh, white. white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, judging there's by been the... like two black characters in this show, <laughs> and a so. few other like black co's like co-stars in an episode but like two main black guest stars one reoccurring and one in another episode both love interests objectification yeah <laughs> yeah oh i know there's the guy who actually hired chandler towards the end of the season when he was going through his internship yeah it's about as far as it goes <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say just judging by the journey you've taken me on through the show i mean this seems pretty spot on yeah dude this is hilarious um, yeah, i mean it started off at first i was like i don't know is this gonna be funny and then pretty soon it just got hilarious yeah <laughs> <laughs> this idea of ross being <laughs> and his job is barely like, oh we probably be a really interesting guy nope he's nope. the boring one in the show <laughs> Does that so happen true. to people? <laughs> Think about becoming paleontologists. I love his back and forth that he created here. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm, this looks like the kind of thing that he probably puts together all by himself. Maybe there's someone to hold the camera, but that could just be an editing program effect to make it have a little, little handheld effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that way it feels like. But like he 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 wrote this very tight. Like this is tightly well done. So oh, yeah. I'm I'm very impressed with the way how he handles this video, man. Well, well it's very knowing about the show, even down to the, like the clapper thing. <laughs> Yeah. You know? <laughs> the first time I was like, what are they going? And then I realized, oh, the yeah. clap, the, the friends. Oh, yeah. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. I love his comment about Chandler in this episode because it's true. People are always like, Chandler's the funny one. Chandler's the funny one. And it's kind of weird to say when I think this is one of the best ensembles in television history, especially in terms of a uh, comedy cast. Like there's someone on Patreon named Gregory Bullock. I've talked with quite a bit about friends. I was telling him like, I love how the show doesn't really have a lead. Like they're all the lead characters in here. And it wasn't even intended to be that way. So when you say like Chandler's the funny one but, but they're all funny you the, know but the but, but writers they, are but, the funny but, they, but the character chandler is supposed to be the funny one in the group he's known to be like uh, suppresses emotions with humor <laughs> it's so true no one ever really laughs yeah, at his jokes on the show when you brought that <laughs> like, point up i started to think back like have i ever seen a character go funny one <laughs> chandler there are times where the characters laugh at his joke but it's rare he's yeah. always making these like insanely sarcastic comments but rarely are people actually laughing at his jokes in the show itself one of the things that uh, I, I find kind of funny when I when I look back on the show or whenever I usually like once a year I end up like rewatching the whole thing on my own time. I notice there's a lot of gay jokes. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, maybe for being a '90s, there's a lot of jokes. Like in terms of like masculinity, gay jokes. Yeah. You know? Every time anything remotely gay happens, the dude characters are always like, Ugh, uh, yeah, like oh, it's funny, like, oh, it's funny because it's gay. Oh, yeah. They don't want to be gay. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a stigma around that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, there's that. Even though I think one of the the head writers and creators is. A gay guy <laughs> but yeah, uh, I was just, yeah. and uh you know one thing I, I i find kind of surprising too is how 
sexual the show has always been. There's always been so many sex jokes, and the show came out in like the mid '90s. But looked, sex was invented towards the latter part of the seasons. They would be more blunt in terms of how they would actually talk about sex. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, like talk about they would just say the word sex or condoms <laughs> and stuff. But back, back then, it was like a lot of you know hints at it in throughout, or door. saying they sleep together a lot. You know, they yeah. slept together. Did you sleep with her? Towards the end, they started getting a lot more vulgar and more clear cut about their sex comedy and their and there is a lot of fat jokes in there which, which I, that is a repetitive joke that i did think gets pretty old after a while especially I, in the last parts of this seasons where it's like i get it monica used to be fat you're running out of comedy material for her here one of <laughs> my biggest associations with friends is watching it with you and just the moments in which those jokes would pop up and you would just go Ah, uh, she's fat. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. that really is the amount of a lot of these jokes. It's just, yeah, she's yeah. fat! Uh, ah. I am so glad he brought up that point about Phoebe's dark past. Yes. Because that is so true. She has such a dark past. But, they, you know, because of the kind of show it is, they did manage to make it funny. But there would be jokes about, like, suicide and whatever. And I forget what specific episode it was, but Phoebe forgot to do something. And she was like, well, you know, my mom killed herself. I'm like, you can't keep pulling that card, Phoebe. Like, something like that so it sounds dark when i say it in that kind of context but in the show it was really funny yeah yeah. okay yeah (laughs) okay so it does make me wonder how the pitch meeting went down because this is by no means a high stakes concept yeah and you know the the characters are very likable but i've seen even those like blog posts or on zergnet about how the friends cast is really some of the meanest characters on television and i've read it Uh, like yeah that's true they are they are all jerks to each other in a lot of ways you know mm -hmm. which is something you can find with a lot of television and movies actually it's like oh one of them are actually really big dicks to one another yeah ribbing is a much bigger part of uh on-screen friendships (laughs) yeah oh yeah or or ribbing to such a degree (laughs) like rachel in the early part of the season was kind of a a meaner character but as she grew she became nicer that's true about the never wearing a bra thing though i'm that's funny he pointed out because i talk a lot about getting nipple chills on this channel and uh whole show jennifer whole anderson definitely had a lot of nipple chills while filming in that cold ass studio on the warner brothers lot man oh yeah. buddy there are yeah, times we're like we're just peeking right through her shirt right there yeah i didn't want to point it out ever but but yeah that's true it it's happens. true but no this is a really funny video so thank you ryan over at screen Rant for putting this together thank you michael b for requesting this and michael b is a guy who has a channel called omni one media it's a fantastic channel i'm constantly telling people that you got to go check it out because he is someone who can be a huge youtuber just get this following a little bit bigger and you'll see what i'm talking about when you watch his videos he really knows his stuff he's great at commentary he's even on the stardust app as well you guys should follow him as soon as you can there's a link in the description box for him this guy and i we talk throughout the week and we have long messages back and forth with one another i'm sorry that the, your last video request got blocked on youtube he didn't have a chance to see it That's so a we gotta find out so a lot of our blocked videos end up going up on our patreon on, so hopefully we can uh, find a way to get that back and put it up on our Patreon page just for you. I mean, it got 20,000 views before it got blocked. So that's your fault, man. It had two days of not being blocked before. So, you know, it's on you. You I should pay attention to your this. notifications, Michael. We did the video. Yeah. But I'm still sorry. Anyway, guys, uh, what's your favorite Friends episode? It's really easy to narrow it down. There's only 10 seasons. You guys can subscribe to the Reject Nation. Click that notification bell. Uh, check us on Patreon, weekly Q&As, TV show reaction, watch alongs. He does music video coverage. Plenty of goodies we offer over there. Do it today.